Hello, everybody, and welcome to Table Talk. Today, we're talking about summer sips from our beer and wine experts. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Joni Rampolo, one of the registered licensed dietitians with your giant food stores and Martin's Food Markets. And I am in Maryland, which is the only state we serve that doesn't have beer and wine in our store. That's true. <laughs> So I'm expecting to learn a lot because I don't see it in the <laughs> store, but I am so excited. Why don't you take a minute to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me today. Thank you, Joni, and everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Colin Heap. I'm the category manager for beer and wine here at the Giant Company. Um, so I'm happy to get some time over this next uh, half hour to uh, chat with you a little bit about my favorite topics. I could go for way more than half an hour, but <laughs> I'll try, try to control it. So we'll answer your questions as best we can. Yeah, so we do have one question already, which I'm kind of excited about. Tomorrow's July 4th, and they are grilling meats and veggies. So for mm -hmm. anybody that has just that family gathering, there, do you have any recommendations for, they're asking for wine, but I'll say beer or wine recommendations for the holiday gathering. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, this is the right time for beer and wine to, to join Table Talk because the, summer is our peak season um, and everybody is having their family get togethers. What I would say is, I mean, I, you, you can read a lot. You can look up different food and wine pairings. There's a lot of suggestions out there. Um, I would kind of consolidate and simplify a little bit by saying if you're having burgers and steaks, and you're a wine drinker, you're probably going to be drinking red wine with that, like a Cabernet, a Pinot Noir, a Merlot. Uh, if you're a beer drinker, uh, you're probably leaning towards styles like lager or IPA um, versus if you're having, say, chicken or seafood, um, you might lean toward white wine. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay are very popular or on the beer side, the lighter styles of beer. People will sometimes don't prefer to have heavier, darker beers in the summer months. Um, so I usually recommend lighter styles like wheat beers. Um, you can think like Blue Moon uh, or lighter lagers and Pilsners, Stella Artois, Modelo, Michelob Ultra, uh, that style. Those are all very popular over the summertime. But the bottom line for me is, you know, drink what you like. And if you like it, uh, take it to the party with you and introduce it to everybody else. Your friends and family may like it just as much as you do. It's, uh, it's really a matter of preference. Um, experiment a little bit. I like to think that my, you know, my team and I work pretty hard on making sure we have the widest assortment and, and variety available for our customers. So go on into your local giant, talk to the, uh, the lead a beer garden team member, and they can help, uh, help you with any recommendations you might need. Do you want to take a minute to address why Maryland doesn't have beer or wine in their stores? <laughs> Good question. Um, so Maryland does not allow grocery stores to have licenses unless uh, you were grandfathered in, which would have been way back in the day, uh, well before we were operating in the state. So uh, there are no licenses that are available for purchase at this point for grocery stores. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I, I would summarize it that way. Whereas in Pennsylvania, where the majority of our stores are, um, you know, you can now buy a restaurant license, even though it's your grocery store, it's the same license that a restaurant or bar would have. Uh, and that's how we operate the beer gardens there. And Virginia. And West yeah, Virginia. Virginia and West Virginia have always allowed. Um, so the groceries <laughs> obviously are. We have 15 stores between Virginia and West Virginia, and they all sell beer and wine. Yep. So what varieties are most popular in the summer that people might lean into? Yeah, white wines for sure. Sauvignon Blanc is super popular right now. Um, think about brands like Nabilo, Starborough, Kim Crawford. Um, and as well as Pinot Grigio. So in the, on the Pinot Grigio side, Cavett is certainly the number one seller, um, a big time brand. Echo Damani, Seaglass is an up and coming brand that a lot of people really like. It has been doing very well in our stores. And uh, Santa Margarita is more of a premium uh, price tier, uh, but is a very popular and, and definitely one of our best selling Pinot Grigios. Those all peak in the summertime. Um, some of the other wines that we sell a lot of in summer, Prosecco. Uh, Prosecco is popular year round, but in the summer, a lot of people like to make their uh, mimosas and uh, you know, brands like La Marca, Mianetto. We have one called Brilla that I really like. Um, those are very popular. Also, the, the, the really fruity wines, 
uh, tend to do better in the summertime. Think about Sangria. A lot of our low, I mean, we have a lot of local wineries and a lot of them specialize in fruit wines, like a, like a blueberry wine, raspberry wine. But Sangria is a traditional fruit wine, um, the Madria brand, the, even the Barefoot brand, and local wineries like Chad's Ford out of the Philadelphia area um, do a great job with Sangria. And those are always very popular for parties in the summertime. And one that really has, uh, in my mind, has grown in popularity recently is Rosé, uh, which also uh, sees a, a seasonal spike in the summertime. Uh, brands like Josh, Hampton Water is one that does really well for us, and uh, Natura. The Natura brand is an organic brand, so uh, very popular, and their uh, Rosé is the best-selling uh, varietal within their line. Um, so those are some of the ones that come to my mind for uh, good summer treats on the wine side. Excellent. We talked about wine. Now that makes me think about beer. Are there any like seasonal favorites for the summer? Absolutely. Uh, summer is a great time for seasonal beers. Um, one of my favorites is Leinenkugels. It's called Summer Shandy. It actually has a little bit of lemon flavor. Um, also, a lot of people are familiar with Sam Adams. Two of their best uh, seasonal beers are Summer Ale and also one called Porch Rocker. Porch Rocker is a Bavarian Rattler style, um, which is, again, very, um, you know, very light and uh, definitely suited towards the hot summer months. We also have some really good options with uh, Dogfish Head, a local brewery out of Delaware. Their summer seasonal is called Mandarin and Mango Crush. It's a fruit ale. Um, Trogues, uh, right here in central PA in the Harrisburg area, uh, is our number one craft supplier, and their summer seasonal is called Field Study. And uh, Victory out of Philadelphia has a gold nail called Summer Love that's very popular. Um, so there's just, summer is great because it has a variety of styles. I feel like it, you know, it will suit, everybody can find something that suits their taste and just perfect for the hot summer days. You had lots of uh, love and thumbs up for some of those things yes, you just absolutely. mentioned. absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. So a customer question, does Giant have a house wine like other grocery stores might? Why or why not? Um, we don't have just one wine that we call our house wine. If you go into our stores now, we've just come out with a new uh, sign program uh, and it's called Giant Finds. So any of those wines that have a little sign in front of them that says Giant Finds, you could kind of consider those are some of our team favorites. So you could kind of consider those to be our house wines, but it's across a range of, of styles. Um, so BU, some people think of BU as our house wine because that was the sort of the first one that we, it, BU is a Riesling wine, a nice white wine, um, but it also, every purchase of BU supports the Planet B Foundation because Giant as a, as a company has a very strong commitment to protecting our environment, pr protecting our, our ecosystem and our food chain. And uh, a lot of that starts with our friends, the bees. Um, so we, we, uh, we came out with BU, um, and, th and that one is one that's really popular in our stores. But yeah, any of those that have the giant finds, I would uh, encourage you, give them a try. I think you'll really like them. So do you have a recommendation for a best wine for marinating a white fish? Wow, that's a good question. Usually, I think you're going to find that they, they would recommend, experts would recommend um, a white wine that has some uh, good acidity to it, like a Pinot Grigio. Um, and you can, I mean, you can also find wines that are specifically supposed to be cooking wines. But I really, I think that most chefs would tell you any wine that you enjoy will amplify the flavor of your food. So I think I would go Pinot Grigio in that case. Yes. Awesome. So another customer in the Philly area is a big fan of Belgian wines, oh, beers. Wow. Belgian um, beers, Belgian beers. Yes, I'm sorry, okay. beers, yes. yes. Is it um, possible Giant will carry these in the future? Yeah, the Philly stores do carry uh, like a Chimay. Chimay is a very popular Belgian beer. Um, you know, usually they're in the, the Belgian double, triple style, so a little bit higher in alcohol. Um, we don't carry a ton of Belgians throughout the entire um, it, the, the entire footprint, but yeah, Chimay is one of my favorites. So look for that one when you're in the Philly stores for sure. And someone mentioned that 
Giant carries non-alcoholic beverages. Do you want we me to do. touch both, on that? Both beers and wines. Uh, the beers, if you're in a store that, that has the beer garden, uh, the non-alcoholic beers will be in the, located in the beer garden in the warm section. Um, and the non-alcoholic wines, though, are actually over in the grocery area in the bar mixer set. So like where you would find strawberry daiquiri mix, pina colada mix, and so forth. So the wine, the NA wines are over there. Um, but so there's a little bit difference in where they're placed within the store. But yes, we do carry those. And somebody's asking if you can spell the B-U that you mentioned. Yeah, B as in the, the bumblebee. So B-E-E-Y-O-U, B-U. Um, little play on words, kind of like B-U as in be yourself, but also protecting the actual bees. Nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Do you have a website where you can browse the selection? So this is the tricky part. Um, in Virginia and West Virginia, we do have the ability to do online uh, sales. So you could get on Martin's Direct and look at the alcohol selection the same as you would with the grocery selection. But uh, Maryland, obviously, we're not selling the beer and wine. And Pennsylvania, uh, we're, not, we're not rolled out with beer with beer. The wine part is actually not legal to sell online in PA, uh, except for the state-owned liquor stores. Uh, so the beer side, we're just getting started with. It's in a pilot phase. So the, the short answer is in PA, currently, no, we don't have um, all of our assortment online for you to browse. So we have a couple questions I'm going to combine into one about non-alcoholic yeah. uh, beverages. So do you know, like, can you discuss brands or do you know how much alcohol is in them? Well, typically you'll see on the, you can look on the label and most of them, they have to be at 0.5% or less to be considered and to label themselves as non-alcoholic. Um, so, vir you know, virtually no, no alcohol in them. Um, as far as brands... Uh, on the wine side, um, Sutter Home and, and their the free brand, FRE with the accent, um, is a very popular brand. And, and St. Regis is the other big brand in NA wine. And then on the beer side, um, you have the traditional ones we do still sell, like the O'Doul's, the Budweiser Zero, and so forth. But the ones that are really growing are the, one, a new brand called The Athletic, um, which has several different SKUs. Um, Run Wild and Free Wave are two of their most popular styles. Um, just super, super high growth in the athletic brand right now. It's more, um, I think, in tune with younger drinkers. Um, and But we do also carry uh, uh, Corona NA, um, Stella Liberté, which is the non-alc version of Stella Artois. So you can get lots of your favorite brands uh, have a, a non-alc equivalent. Thank you. And I have a question. Do you carry any wines that are not sulfured? Uh, I really don't know the answer to that offhand. I'd have to do a little bit of research. Uh, so maybe if I can uh, come back or post in your chat later on, we could look at that. Yep. Any wines that have zero sugar? I don't think we have any that are zero sugar. There are wines that are lower sugar, lower calorie, um, think about Starborough, the very popular Starborough Sauvignon Blanc has a lighter version called Starlight. Um, Fitvine is a, is a brand that is all low calorie, lower sugar. Um, Cupcake Lighthearted is a, a spinoff of the popular cupcake wines that are lower in sugar. Um, so there are definitely uh, options out there. Uh, you, you can ask, again, ask your beer lead for anything that uh, you might have questions about. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then somebody's saying that they're from Yardley and they don't have beer and wine there. Don't have beer and wine there. That's correct. Um, yeah. Some of our stores, unfortunately, there's about 27, I think, left in PA that do not have the beer garden. And I can tell you that the vast majority of those are because of space constraints. So the, the Yardley store, I would love to see us expand that uh, that property at some point. Um, it'd be very difficult because obviously it's uh, very commercialized around there. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are, unfortunately, there are certain stores throughout our market area that don't yet have the beer card. So I am someone, I like flavored malt beverages. Yeah. Can you talk about the difference between beer and a flavored malt beverage? 
Yeah, you'll see that signage in our stores and some people, you know, don't don't know what that means. So um, really beer and FMBs are, we call them FMBs, flavored malt beverage. They're all malt based, right? So they're made with grain, they're brewed. Um, traditional beer takes on the flavor of the grain and the hops, whereas the FMBs, and you can think about brands like from everything from Twisted Tea, Mike's Hard Lemonade, all the seltzers like White Claw, um, you know, Seagram's and Smirnoff, Smirnoff Ice, all those types of drinks. Those are all flavored malt beverages, meaning that they have been given a specific flavor, like a lemon flavor or a tea flavor or a raspberry flavor, instead of having the natural flavor of the hops the way a traditional beer would. So I know you talked about some summer favorites. Do you have, do we have like, what are the best selling beer and wine at Giant Martins? Well, the best, yeah, the best sellers across the board are your big names like Miller Lite, Corona, Coors Light, uh, here in PA, Yingling, the Yingling brand is huge. Um, on the wine side, our best selling brands, La Marca Prosecco is typically our number one brand. Uh, Cavett Pinot Grigio is usually number two. Sometimes they flip flop uh, different weeks. Um, but the Josh brand, I can highly recommend. They have a full line of, of basically we carry all varietals in Josh. Just this year, we picked up the Prosecco in Josh, as well as a brand new item from Josh that's called Sea Swept, uh, which is a Sauvignon Blanc Pinot Grigio blend. And, um, you know, they're, they're all very good, good quality. Um, if you're in, if you're a box wine drinker, I would highly recommend the black box brand that does really well for us and is a uh, great value for the money. Um, and Kendall Jackson Chardonnay, I can't forget that one. That's always one of our, you know, say top three or four wines each week. So uh, best-selling Chardonnay for sure. So we have a customer that has a sulfur allergy. She heard there's these drops that you can add to wine that might um, reduce the sulfur. Is that I something... You know about that? I don't. I, I have not. I've not heard about that. Um, yeah, I know there was the other question about sulfur as well. So I'll have to. I'll have to do a little more research on that part for you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get back to you yeah. on on some of the sulfur questions because I don't know that answer either. Sometimes I can jump in because yeah. I know an answer, but that's not one of them. So, do we have any? hidden gems in the store or a lesser known brand that, you know, sometimes you hear, Ooh, this, you may not have heard of this, but this is a must try item. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, our team goes through, we meet with a lot of different suppliers. Obviously there's more wines that they ask us to carry than what we have space for. So we have to be somewhat selective, but some of the ones that folks might not uh, have heard of, um, like I said, New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs across the board are very popular right now. In particular, I like the, the Nabilo brand. Uh, folks might be familiar with Starborough and Kim Crawford a little more than that. Um, in Prosecco, I had mentioned briefly the Brilla brand. You can find Brilla because it is in a sparkly, uh, glittery type blue label. Um, so very easy, stands out on the shelf. Uh, in Riesling, I did mention the BU, is, which is one of my favorite wines that we carry. Uh, we also have, if you like sweeter wines, there's also a BU Sweet Red. So that was a spinoff. Once the Riesling really took off for us, we did the Sweet Red blend, uh, which is also on the BU label. In uh, Moscato, again, another sweet style. If you like Moscato, we have um, two, a red and a white that are called Ambuscato. And those have that giant find sign in front of them that I mentioned. Um, so those are definitely ones that I really like. There's also a brand called Aravale, which we have now four varietals in. We have a Cabernet, a Red Blend, uh, a Chardonnay, and now a Sauvignon Blanc as well. So um, a, a nice line, very competitively priced, uh, and delicious wines. And, um, you know, one of my, I, I tend personally, I, my wife and I, we tend to like the, the bigger, bolder red wines. And if that's what you're into, I can highly recommend a California Cabernet called Juggernaut, uh, which we carry in our stores, which is, uh, just an excellent wine and excellent value for the money. I'm definitely a red wine girl. So I'll have to try that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. So I know, especially now, we have a lot of value conscious customers. Do you have anything to suggest if I'm like really want good value for what I purchase? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we we go about building our assortment based on having what we feel. And, and to me, qual- I mean, value is all about quality compared to the price tier, right? So we do a lot of research and, and build our planograms based on having good value at each of the price tiers. So if you want an entry level wine, we'll have that. If you want something that's premium, super premium, we'll have that. Um, some of the ones that, uh, and, and I, one other thing I would say for our customers in Pennsylvania um, is that we match, you're, you're probably familiar with the fine wine and good spirit stores and the state owned liquor stores in Pennsylvania, which sell wine, we match their prices, right? So you don't have to worry that if I shop at Giant, I'm going to pay more than I would pay at the state store. It's, we match their price. And when they have a sale, um, if you come into our stores and you see a red price tag, that's just to show that we're matching their price. Um, oh, that's so, awesome. That was actually a question. That yeah, was going to be my next um, one. <laughs> but to, yeah, back on your question about uh, value, um, I have a couple suggestions. So we, again, in our giant finds line, we have a Bordeaux called Chateau Commandery. It actually has a really, really long name, but I'll, I'll kind of <laughs> shorten it for you by call it, we call it Chateau Commandery, $11.99 for a high quality Bordeaux. You really cannot beat that. Um, we recently added a, another French wine, a Cote de Rhone called Cuvée Benedict, uh, which is at $13.99. Again, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a drier wine, medium bodied, light, not too fruity. Uh, it's just a delicious wine at that price point. Um, the three liter box wines I mentioned are great values, both black box, Boda box. They're in that $21 to $23 range, but that's for, that's for 20. The box is 20 glasses of wine. Um, so a real value there. Um, I also uh, like the Frontera line, which is made by Concia Toro. Those are in the 1.5 liter glass bottle sizes. And uh, for a 1.5 liter at $9.99, that's just an absolutely amazing value. So if you haven't checked out Frontera, I would highly recommend that as well. Somebody's asking a question about hard ciders. Do you have any recommendations? And is there like a pear cider? A pear cider. Um, Down East is a brand that has a lot of uh, seasonal varieties. So that pear might not be in their core variety, but they may have a seasonal that covers that. If you're down South, um, Virginia is home to Bold Rock Cider, which is our best-selling cider brand outside of a national brand like, like Angry Orchard. We have Angry Orchard in all of our stores. We have Bold Rock in Virginia, West Virginia, where that where it's from. Um, and yeah, the Down East brand is definitely growing in popularity. Um, so there, there should be, and in Philadelphia, there's a couple local cideries that we carry. So in Winchester, Virginia, there's a Winchester cider work. So there's a number of local ciders that are in addition to those, um, those bigger name brands, but there, yeah, if you, you talk to your beer lead in the store, they, they can definitely point you to the, the, uh, hard cider section. So what style of beer is most popular now? Uh, gosh, um, I would have to say IPA is still is still probably um, the most popular overall. Um, I mean, it's not the not by total sale. Total sales would be lager, right? Because that's where your Miller Lite, Budweiser, um, Coors Light, and so forth come in. So a lot of heavy hitters in, in lager and pilsner. But uh, the as far as like you know, true craft beer drinkers, it's IPAs and. Um, the higher alcohol content IPAs, if it's eight or nine percent, the, what they call the double or imperial IPAs, uh, those are probably the most uh, popular right now. And I get a lot of questions about uh, sub styles of IPA. You hear the term West Coast IPA or New England IPA. It's really just a, a difference in how the brewer treats the hops. West Coast IPAs typically have a pale color and they'll have a little more resin or pine type um, flavor to them. And they will, people who don't like that style call it bitter, uh, <laughs> uh, versus a new England IPA is going to be a little cloudier or hazier. It's going to be more, uh, citrusy or tropical on the palate, and it's going to be a little smoother and, uh, you know, less, less bitter taste to it. So it's, again, it's, it's, it's all a matter of taste. I like both, um, you know, both all styles of IPA, uh, and that's a lot of what I, you know, why I drink myself and, uh, and the guys on my team. But I would say also uh, brands that we're seeing a lot of growth in right now. Uh, Lawson's is a New England brand that has a, a beer called Sip of Sunshine. Super delicious. 
Um, other half, which was started in Brooklyn, but now has tap rooms in DC and has one here in our market in Philadelphia. Um, their beers are really popular, really good quality IPAs. Um, more broadly available is the new New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger line. Uh, everybody, you know, has seen like the cans that have the skeleton guy on them. They're very funny. A um, lot of great beers in that line. And if you're looking for something that's uh, local here, PA made, I would highly recommend New Trail, which is out of Williamsport, PA, and just has an incredible uh, diverse selection of beers. Um, their release schedule is crazy. They're coming out with new beers all the time. And uh, they're probably one of the best quality beers in PA. Thank you. I want to go back to wine for a minute. What is the shelf life on wine? So wine that's in glass bottles um, will typically last for several years. Um, you won't generally see an actual expiration date on it. Um, and that's because it's going to be, it's, it's shelf stable. It's good for several years, um, especially the reds. Uh, I mean, most people know if it's a bigger, bolder style of red, it can be aged for many, many years. Um, where we usually see anything in terms of like a shelf life is the box wines or the little convenience ones that are tetra, little tetra boxes. Um, those will have de usually a default shelf life of two years. Now, if you talk about what's the shelf life once they're open, um, wine in glass bottles, once it's open, generally only a couple of days versus the box wines, because there's a bag inside the box. Um, they're usually good for up to a month once they've been opened. Mm. Didn't know that. Excellent. Yeah. So a customer is asking a question of you personally, are you allowed to taste test when on you work? <laughs> um, yeah, I always tell people with, that uh, it's, this is a tough job, but somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> um, so yes, it involves some uh, taste testing from time to time. Sometimes we'll go out and visit our brewery and winery partners um, sometimes we do have people who want to ship samples here to the office. We, uh, don't drink them while, while we're actually working, <laughs> but take them home, uh, try them. Um, you know, what I, the joke I always make is if I do that, it's called research, right? If anybody else does it, you're just drinking. Absolutely. That's funny. We like that. So I know we have an exclusive beer out with Kate May. Can you talk a little bit about that? We do, and it's part of a series that we've been doing for about four years now, our collaboration beer series. We've partnered with a number of different uh, local breweries, most of them PA breweries, but in this case, Cape May is, is obviously from the Jersey Shore. Um, their beers are popular in our stores. We partnered with them um, on an IPA, um, and I hold on one second. I got a can here. I can even show everybody the label. Um, so here he is. It's called Ocean's Hidden Giant. Um, it's delicious. It's a 8% alcohol by volume um, IPA, has really good tropical fruit notes to it, uh, and perfect for the summertime. This one came out right before Memorial Day. Um, you know, we're all already more than half of it is sold. This is, so the collabs, by definition, are like a, a limited time, right? So that we make a, a certain quantity. It's all sent out to the stores. And unfortunately, when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, but also happy to say, I'll give you guys a little sneak preview here. Um, you heard it here first. Our next collaboration is going to be with Other Half that I just mentioned, um, the brewery, the tap room in Philadelphia. And it's going to be called Giant Possibility. And it's going to be out for Labor Day weekend. So it's going to be another uh, delicious IPA. Can't wait to try it myself. Haven't tried that one yet. Um, but we're looking forward to that because Other Half makes, you know, super high quality beers and it should be another great addition to the line. And the best part about the collabs, Joni, is that every purchase, they're sold in a 16 ounce four pack and every purchase, uh, $1 of that goes to a, a charitable donation. And in the case of the Cape May collab, it's gonna be to the Surfrider Foundation, which uh, helps to clean up our beaches and oceans. And in the case of the upcoming other half collab, that donation, that $1 donation per unit sold will go to Phil Abundance, which is one of our food bank partners in Philadelphia. I love Phil Abundance. That's, that's awesome news. Yes. If you need any help with research, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> so we mentioned so many beers here. If somebody wanted to try different beers, what's the best way for them to do that? I'm uh, glad you asked that because we actually have what I think is the best uh, mix of six program in our market, which means that 
a customer, you can come in and there's a, there's a case that has all single cans and single bottles um, already pre-chilled for you. And you can make up a six pack of any of those, any six beers that you like and try them all out, you know, individually and not have to buy, you know, invest in buying a 12 pack or even a six pack. You can just get six different beers and try them all. So really with us, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's a great value. You, it, it's not just beer. It's also the seltzers and the FMBs and the ciders that we talked about. So it's really everything we have on the malt based side. Um, the teas, the lemonades. We also have local items, seasonal items in there, uh, imported beers for you to try. So if you're thinking, you know, hey, that looks interesting, but I don't want to, I don't want to spend a lot just to find out I don't like it. You know, you can buy the single bottle for two ninety nine, or you can mix the six and uh, mix the six is thirteen dollars. So great deal. Well, this has been so informative. I know it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Got that yes. comment like, oh, is it happy hour time yet? <laughs> it's happy hour somewhere, right? It's happy hour somewhere. But thank you so much for joining us and uh, enlightening our customers on everything beer and wine as we head into a holiday weekend. Thank you, everybody. Getting yep. lots of love there in the chat and <laughs> through your emojis. So thank you all for joining us. We hope that you learned something and we'll see you next time. Thanks, folks. Bye. Take care.